Hello. All are welcome. <coughs> now, today we are continuing our Revolution uh, lecture series. And the fourth lecture is hydrodynamic lubrications. Okay. So, previously we have seen hydrostatics lubrication. Now, the second type is hydrodynamic lubrication. So, it is also called as fluid film lubrication or thick film lubrication or flooded lubrication. A thick film or lubricant is interposed between the surface of bodies in the relatively motions. So, in this type of lubrication, there has no pressure buildup in the film due to relative motion of the surfaces. So, in hydrodynamic bearing or hydrodynamic lubrication, the total supporting high pressure fluid film is created due to the shape and relative motion between the surfaces. The moving surfaces pulls the lubricant into a wedge shape zone at a velocity sufficiently high to create the high pressure, which is necessary to separate the two surfaces again. So, the fluid friction is always substituted for this sliding friction. And the coefficient of friction is always decreases, and thereby the load carrying capacity of these bearings are somewhat low than hydrostatic bearings. <clears throat> so, how the parallel surfaces are act as a two surfaces or conducting surfaces, and between these two surfaces, the wedge shape film is developed, and this is the wedge shape film is developed for this pressure buildup and in dispute due to relative motions. So this remains constant throughout the influence only by the load. <coughs> so in this hydrodynamic bearings, as the load increases, the surfaces are pushed toward each other until they are likely to touch. So very thin film or the film thickness is created between these two surfaces. So the figure shows how the journal start to rotate and develop this fluid film between these two rotating surfaces or sliding surfaces. So in first position, we have seen here, in first position, the shaft is touching with the bearings, means the bearings now stationary. In second positions, the journals start to rotate and tends to climb up the bearings. So here, the fluid film developing action is started. And in third positions, while the journal is completely in rotating positions or in running positions, the slips occur due to the load of tractions and settle the eccentricity of these bearings. Means the eccentricity, the distance or somewhat fluid film thickness is developed and it should maintain throughout the lubrication process. In next figure we are seen here, the journal and the shaft are always in working positions and in which the pressure curve is developed, which is the kind of U shape. Means the pressure developed between these hydrodynamic bear journal bearings are in the shape having U shape generally and maximum pressure is reached somewhere in between the inlet and outlets. So close to inlets. So where is the hydrodynamic conditions or the fluid velocity is maximum? So we have to see in this journals, the fluid velocity is always depends on this velocity of the journal or the riders. When the velocity increases, it tends to rise toward a development of eccentricity in these bearings. And this is accompanied by greater minimum film thickness. So, what is the relation between hydrodynamic conditions and load? We have to see now, just like in hydrostatic bearings, 
we are supplying the lubricant to the external source as a pump. The pump is pumping the lubricant and supplies to the bearing surfaces. In hydrodynamic bearings, there is no such conditions. So, in this load carrying capacity of these bearings are always low. Increase in load decreases the minimum film thickness, also increases the pressure within the film mass to provide a counteracting force. <clears throat> increase in pressure is always increases the fluid viscosity. So, what are the design parameters or design considerations in hydrodynamic journal bearings? We have seen now only the names because of the details we have seen. So, separate, separate units as a hydrodynamics lubrications. So, how to know? Put the terminology or nomenclature of this hydrodynamic journal bearings. We have to see the radial clearance which is the difference in the radial of the bearing and journal and it is shown by r eccentricity it is the distance between the center of the bearing and journal the operating conditions summer field numbers or the minimum oil field thickness so there are a lot of bearing parameters which have to be studied in your analysis of the bearings So, in this hydrodynamic bearings, what are the advantages of this hydrodynamic bearings? You see now, these bearings are simple in construction and easy to maintain. They have low initial as well as low maintenance cost. They do not require auxiliary equipment like pump, just like hydrostatic bearings. They are reliable and have low power loss. At the same time, with the advantage, somewhat limitations are also, and they are they cannot be used for low load applications as well as extremely high speed applications. They have high frictional losses at low speeds. They have poor positional accuracy. They offer high starting frictions, fluid film breaks during the starting and stopping of the machines, and hence they are not suitable where the there are frequent start and stoppages. So, somewhat application of these bearings are these bearings are used in engines, centrifugal pumps, hydraulic turbines, and guideways of the machine tools. So, how these hydrodynamic bearings are work, how the analysis takes place, and how the petrol motivations or petrol bearings, these are we have to be studied in our details in our analysis chapter or units. Then, so in this slide, we are seeing there are two parallel surfaces one is for journal, one is for shaft or bearings. Okay, so this is the velocity profile here. How the velocity or shear force are increased at upper level means the velocity gradient is directly proportional to the resistance offer. Okay. So velocity at the bottom of the plate is always zero, but velocity at the top is maximum and is denoted by u. So in this Phenomena we are seeing here, there is no pressure buildup in the film due to the relative motions. It always remains constant throughout the influence only by the load. As the load increases, the surface are pushed towards each other until they are likely to touch. So, this figure suggests the starting of this journals, rotating the journals shaft in the bearings and at the highest eccentricity it takes the 
uniformity and Okay. So these are some basic of these hydrodynamic bearings. How the works, what are the requirements, what are the design parameters? So application advantages and disadvantages. So we have to see in details in our unit number four. So, in conclusions, we have to learn these hydrodynamic bearings or hydrodynamic lubrications in hydrodynamic bearings, in which there is no any requirement for the external pumps. Okay, thank you.